Hi, welcome to NIMS and Associates Snapshot on Advanced Planning and Scheduling in Actimatica. Our agenda today is going to be to discuss what is advanced planning and scheduling and what typical challenges are for businesses that manufacture. Advanced planning and scheduling is used to visualize resource constraints and schedule operations. It's used to plan work centers, tooling, and machines and to avoid material bottlenecks. Typically, a company has challenges around finite capacity. You don't have unlimited capacity and you have to make planning decisions based on bandwidth. You'd like to verify that you have sufficient capacity at the time of creating production orders. And you'd like to communicate to your customers when you can promise product. That's a feature called capable to promise. Capable to promise. The capable to promise feature in Acumatica allows a user, while in the process of entering a sales order, to check and see when a particular product can be promised to a customer. With running the capable to promise utility, Acumatica checks current raw material stocking for items that are manufactured, looks at purchase orders and possible receipts in the future and checks on work center capacity. Let's take a look at Capable to Promise. On the sales order entry screen, when in the process of entering a sales order, a user can highlight an inventory item and select the process CTP. Processing CTP actually creates a production order of a certain type in the production order system, a capable to promise production order. These production orders get created and deleted according to whether or not the promise is accepted or rejected. I've just run capable to promise on this inventory item. And we can see that the systems come back for item 10, 1040 and said that we can promise this on the eighth. So this is a good sign. Now, at this point, what Acumatica has done is it's created a production order of a type of capable to promise. If we look at production orders, you can see that Acumatica has created a production order called CT. These orders will be created and deleted depending on options that are selected during the capable to promise process. If a promise is accepted. In other words, the customer says, that's a good date. Let's go ahead and do that. What Acumatic will do is delete this capable to promise order and create a regular order in its place. If the capable to promise is rejected on the capable to promise screen, then Acumatica will delete the old capable to promise order. And if you're checking again, we'll create a new one as necessary. Back on the capable to promise screen, you have an action box up here. So I've run capable to promise. It says that we can deliver this inventory item to a customer by the 8th. And then I could either accept or reject the promise to the customer. If I reject it, it will go out and delete that capable to promise production order. If I accept it, it will convert that capable promise production order into a regular production order. In order for a inventory item to be capable to promise capable, the inventory item has to be set up in such a way that typically involves two things. It typically involves assigning a default bill of material. So the system knows what product structure to check when it's checking for capable promise. Keep in mind, capable promise will blow through the product structure and check for material and its availability. And it will check for capacity at work centers and making sure there's enough bandwidth for that. So it needs a bill of material structure to work through. The next item is it needs to be flagged as a CTP item, capable to promise item. 
with those two sections clicked, it is eligible to become a capable of promise item. In addition, probably also flag make to order items, meaning that a production order can be spawned from a sales order by the user. Scheduling. Acumac advanced planning and scheduling allows for production orders to be scheduled and graphically displayed. Scheduling takes into account materials and material availability, work center capacity, and machine and tooling capacity as well. Setting up work center capacity and machine capacity. In the bill of materials workspace, work centers is where capacity for work centers is maintained. Typically, the capacity for a work center is done in crew size. And then with the combination of crew sizes and shifts, the amount of work that can be performed at a work center is calculated. So in this case, for work center WC10, we're doing capacity based on crew size. If we look at our shifts tab, you can see that two shifts work at this work center. In each shift, we've told it what the crew size is going to be. We also have an efficiency metric, which would allow us to either increase or decrease the efficiency of a crew. The combination of crew size plus the shift information determines the capacity for labor at a work center. If we're talking about machines, different machines can have different elements that allow for capacity. So for example, an efficiency factor will drive the capacity for a machine up and down. Scheduling of production orders. When advanced scheduling is activated in Acumatica, individual production orders can be scheduled. Now, if we're looking at a production order and you look at the production detail, each work center on the production order can have the amount of time for setup, the amount of time for run units, and the amount of time for machine time. The total of all the time necessary to produce the production order as determined on the operations will play into the schedule. In other words, scheduling is performed based on the total of the time metrics for setup time, runtime, machine time, queue time, finish time, and move time. On a production order, you can schedule them individually. You can see here that this production order has been scheduled before because the schedule status is scheduled. Individual production orders can be scheduled at, or rescheduled at any time. So for example, if I wanted to say that this is going to be start on, and I wanted to say reschedule this production order, that's enough to reschedule this individual production order. All production orders, mm -hmm can be rescheduled on one screen without having to go to each individual production order. In the production order system, there is a screen called rough cut planning. Rough cut planning shows all released production orders. And the rough cut planning allows you to schedule them from here. So I can sort of massively schedule. Rough cut planning also allows us to firm up the schedule for particular production orders. In other words, they won't be scheduled again. I can schedule and firm them up, or I can undo the firm. Firm is a concept that just means whatever the schedule is, we're going to put it in cement. We're not going to allow it to be moved around. After production orders have been scheduled, someone can go to the production scheduling board and review in a graphical way what the impact of scheduling has done to your company's production schedule. So this screen is divided up into three basic areas. So the first one is all about how you're picking which production orders to look at. In this case, I'm looking at 
production orders from the 1st through the 15th. But I could select by warehouse, by certain types of orders for specific production order numbers, for specific inventory IDs, etc. Once determined, the production orders are going to show up in two areas of the grids down below. The top grid shows production orders. The bottom grid shows work centers and machines. The top grid, we scroll through, lists individual production orders with objects that tell a little bit about the production order. So the diamond means that this production order is linked to a sales order. The yellow on the diamond indicates that this production order has a pretty tight schedule. So really what that means is that the scheduled finish date of the production order equals the date that it's got to be ready for shipping and sales order. The three colors that diamonds can be, remember diamonds indicate that it's linked to a sales order. The three colors are green, yellow, and red. And so as you would expect, green means, yes, you've got you know a little room to spare. Yellow means it's a tight schedule. Red means you're not going to meet the schedule. This is busted. If we look down the grid, we'll see a couple of others. Here we see a green block. And this means that this production order is going to take, looks like a full day spanning two different days to complete, which is what this block means. If we scroll down below, you'll see colors indicated for each work center. So this one here is going to take a little bit of time at WC10, just a few minutes. It looks like we've got plenty of capacity at, at work center WC10 after that. You can see that the hours are scaling up this way. If we scroll further down, we'll run into WC30, where you can see that WC30 is completely engaged on April 8th and moving a little bit into April 9th for its busyness. If I hover the mouse over the green indicator for busyness at the work center, you can see which work production orders are going to be worked on at that work center that day. So production order 61 and, and 128 are going to be worked on there. To reschedule a production order, Acumatica doesn't allow you to drag and drop things to different coordinates on the grid below. But you can pop into the production order, place the production order on hold, and then change the constraint. Reschedule the production order, and then pop back into the green to see the changes. Thank you for the opportunity to present to you. If you like this snapshot, be sure to like, share, and subscribe on our YouTube channel. Thank you.